Hey everybody, Sam McGuire here. We are going to be looking at Lord of the Rings Lego for iOS. Just released, and it's pretty cool. We're going to look at some of the gameplay here, just a little bit of it. We're not doing a full walkthrough or anything like that, but this is part of a review for PadGadget.com. Victory was near. <laughs> The power of the ring could not be undone. Oh. It was in this moment that Isildur, son of the king, took up his father's sword. So what we're going to look at is just some of the ways that this app is so cool. We're going to look at some of the different gameplay things that are happening here. Um, we're also going to talk about just briefly how this relates to some of the other Lego for iOS games that are out there. Because it's building upon the other games that have already been released. But it actually does some things that are pretty cool that are different. So first... All of this that you're seeing is me actually playing this with screen capture. So this is an actual capture of a game that I was playing today. And it's all touch. So typically you're using two hands. Left hand typically is going to be moving around the screen. So I can touch anywhere with my thumb. And if I move it a direction, that's the direction the guy goes. There's no indicator on the screen of any part of that. And then your right hand is doing things like jumping and also doing things like touching characters and using some of their special powers. So if you click and hold on your guy itself, it'll load up this special hit. With the elf, you can do double tap for a double jump. There's just a lot of stuff. And when fighting, you use it to touch your enemies to attack them. And then you can also draw a circle around your guys to fight with special moves. I just touched that object after I broke it and it built it. I'm going to hit this by touching the black and red object there. There we go. Special move. So now... You can see at the bottom of the screen there, there's two little icons for the people. You can change characters by just selecting which one you need. And it does a pretty good job of following along with the other character behind you. I found that in the console game version of this, a lot of times you'd have to switch and do the other part. Well, this really makes it go smoother by if you're doing one character, that the computer will take care of what the other character needs to do to get basically catch up with you and keep up so every once in a while it takes a little getting used to using that touch interface but for the most part you can see that I'm able to do everything I want to and this is the first time I've ever played it so not that bad every once in a while there's some kind of weirdness getting to where you want to you'll see that a little bit here where it was a little hard to tell where to hit the wall, so I went down, took a couple tries there, held him down, power up, breaks the wall, and then now we can jump across. So the jumping is one of the things where you have to hold with one finger and kind of choose the direction while you tap with the other finger. And you can swipe a little bit as well. And once you get used to that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But every once in a while, it is more difficult to see. And then jumping down, it, a lot of the details of aiming are taken care of by the iPad. But check out these graphics. I mean, this is really cool stuff. This is really quite intricate for an iOS game. Now, I know that there's a lot of games like Infinity Blade that are renowned for how great they look. But most of the time with Infinity Blade, you have a background and then two characters that have a set 
amount of moves. Well, in here, you have a number of different characters all moving around, and you're in a full 3D environment. So not unlike the other LEGO games that are for iOS, this has a lot of the same similarities, but I think the controls are probably the best that they've ever been in any of these games in terms of the in kind of being intuitive, but also being flexible enough that you can go where you want to and do what you want to. So the other really cool thing about this game is that it's using the audio from the movies themselves. So it's not doing the Lego thing where you have like unintelligible words. You actually have the actors from the films, which are great voice talents, and it's following that along pretty closely. So you can still get some of the humor that are, are really well known for the Lego games, but also you get some of the great talent of the actors that are there. So a kind of a good mix between being serious and humorous. Now, the, some of the differences between this and the console game are that this is obviously more simple, not nearly as complex with all the different missions you have to go on in the console game, not as many of the tasks and things like that, but there's enough differences here that uh, it's not necessarily a repeat of playing the other game, and so if you've played the other one and beat it, this is enough different that you're gonna wanna do it and play it as well. So this is an, is an example of one of the tasks we have where we had to make a cup of tea, take it over to a different character, get the ham from them so we can give it to the dog to get in the field and get underway on our quest. So this is an example, pretty typical example of a lot of things we're gonna be doing here is solving problems, figuring out where we need to go. You can see the green arrow there is giving us some information now we have to give it the dog, he starts eating, and now we can go in the field, which is a maze. Allows us to get points, but we have to avoid the farmer. There's just a lot of really cool stuff here. So, again, you can see the richness of the environment here. Most of it's explorable. In free play, you're going to be able to come back with different characters and do different things. So, it's not just a one time through. There's actually the ability to come back and do a lot of additional stuff just as you would expect from these Lego games. That's pretty common. Um, great soundtrack, great music. A lot of the great drama from the books and from the movies. Now, like I said, I feel like this game is really built on the other iOS games that they've released. So the other ones we have include the Harry Potter series, um, the Batman series, and with this one, it takes a lot of the best parts because I remember when we went from the first set of Harry Potter um, Lego games to the second set that a lot of people really complained about the controls and how different they were and how hard. And so now we can actually do this full touch interface, which is really simple and intuitive. But in a few minutes here, we're going to look at how to change that and use the other version as well. So you can see here, cool, we love wizards fighting. The cutscenes are still something really worth watching. But again, nothing that you wouldn't expect because we're essentially replaying the movie a little bit. Okay, so here we are with the controls. We have the virtual controls option, which is this here with a little game pad on the left side and then our three different options on the right side, which are going to change depending on which character we're using and what tools they have. And then the rest of the options in here are pretty limited. We don't get a, any control over the graphics. We can do some basic settings with the sound. If we have some extras, you'll see that we can look at them there when you buy them as in-app purchases. Here you can see we have things like subtitles and music levels. And then our achievements. So this is pretty cool. My, my kids really love achievements because it keeps them really engaged in what they're doing to get extra points and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's Lord of the Rings Lego for iOS. Really, really awesome. Gameplay is really fun, engaging. Graphics are really amazing. Play is amazing. This is on the iPad Air, and so you can see... Everything's smooth. It's actually smoother on the actual device. When you do this screen capture, you lose just a little bit. And so if you're actually playing the device itself, it's 
even better, which is really hard to describe, but check it out. It's a great game. 